In this Ghost Solution Suite 3.3 video, we'll be going over the deploying of the agent as well as uh, the installation of the agent manually and some of the options that can be used for scripting. To deploy the agent, we can go ahead and go to Tools and Remote Agent Installer. We'll put in a set of credentials that has rights to the registry, rights to the C drive, and rights to execute on that client system, so preferably an administrative account on that destination machine. If we wanted to change the install folder, we could do so here. We also could change uh, which servers the agent would talk to. Um, big thing that we would maybe want to put in here is changing the logging to a different level or to a different location. Uh, we'll leave it as is for now. Just be aware that these various different settings are here. Next, we could have a client group for new machines to, to go to and we could then have those clients go and join that group. We're going to go ahead and add here, and I have the IP address of the machine that I'm going to deploy to, so I'll put that in there. You can also put in the computer name as long as the DNS is working. If we had problems, we can go to View Logs, and it'll tell us the various steps that it was along the way, and uh, can give us some insight as to where it failed and then what piece we need to look at to resolve if we do. So go ahead and close that and finish this. Exit the install and then finish this. Now you can see we have a new folder called new because that's what I created it. Uh, and inside of there I have a new client machine. And if we go in here to the properties, we can see some information about the machine. Uh, what version of Windows is installed, um, the server that it's talking to, who's currently logged in, the, the, the icon changes depending on if a person is logged in or not, or if they're uh, powered on or not. My machine's a, a VM, but I can uh, see how much RAM it has, which processor, etc. cetera, um, drives and uh, information capacity, just a bunch of good information that can be gathered from here. So now let's go over and do an install from a installer rather than doing a push. So my server happens to be, uh, let's see, what is my server name? Pause that. All right, we will go ahead and go to my client machine then and perform a install from a running of the installer rather than uh, doing a push. So I have my GSS on box as the name of my server for this uh, test lab and I'm going to go to the express share. That's where all of the ghost files are stored at including the agents and we can go into the client here. Uh, the ADL agent is uh, for Linux and we're just going to go with the regular A client and if we go down to the bottom we can see we have our D agent and our D agent x64. Now, for purposes of this, I will do the install manually, and then I will go over later the document with what we can script. So we can call to the agent and have uh, some arguments in our command line to tell it to automatically talk to the server and do so silently. So welcome. We are going to go with the default install location. We're doing the install here from just running the installer. We're not actually performing a scripted or an intelligent install. We're just running the installer. It puts in a generic uh, IP here. All right, we'll go ahead and put in the server name or the IP and run through the install. Because we're taking the default settings, when it's all done, we should end up with the tray icon. And there it is, our tray icon, and the blue in the looking glass tells us that it is talking to the server. We can go over here to the server, and we can see here it is uh, here and talking. We've already got the basic inventory. Uh, if we come and bring up the GUI, uh, it'll tell us which server it's talking to, the IP, the information. Now, a symptom that will happen occasionally is if the IP the MAC address, the computer name are not listed in here, it won't communicate properly to the server. And that'll be a problem generally resulting in a corrupt install, potentially uh, permissions issues. 
and potentially WMI not being able to read the data properly. So we'll go ahead and go to properties. We can take a look at some of these things that can be changed. Specifically, if we needed to do some logging, we could go ahead and turn the logs on and log the errors and give it a file size here. Whereas before, uh, the default was that the logging was turned off. So we will do that and uh, exit. No, I don't really want to exit. just want to close. Thank you. And that's how we do our connectivity. As soon as that service restarts from my starting, or sorry, my turning the logging on, we'll be able to see this icon change here. In the Ghost Solution Suite user guide, we've got a couple of examples of how to script the installation of the um, x86 and the x64 installer. Basically, we have a QAN option for quiet, the TCP IP address, that would be the server's IP address, and then the port that's communicating on 402 by default. So we can do this and script the deployment of the uh, agent uh, in, from the install directory.